Hey guys, we're going to take another look at the Pine Phone today. So this is an update for March of 2023. So I had a lot of trouble with um, things not working in, in uh, Manjaro and uh, Ubuntu Touch previously. And if you actually look at what's supported by Ubuntu Touch, like almost all of the features are not supported in a ton of, it was amazing. It was working as well as it was. So um, yeah, it was not really usable as a phone with either of those, either Manjaro or Ubuntu Touch. So um, that, that was a while back and I am redoing this for, uh, I'm giving this another shot for March of 2023. Now I have post market OS installed on here right now. Um, default password is 147, 147. Now this is the, this is the uh, newest version of post market OS, um, you know, as of, as of right now. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit interesting. It's, it's based on Alpine Linux. And, um, yeah, so this is a, basically the app switcher. Ba basically you would swipe up from the bottom of the screen like this and, uh, you, you can select different apps and you can swipe up on the app to do, to uh, close it. I'll, I'll do that in a bit, but, um, yeah, so I, I've reviewed, I haven't reviewed everything comprehensively on this yet, but this seems to be working a whole lot better now. Um, I, I still wouldn't say that it's ready for use as like a replacement for an iPhone or an Android phone. Um, it has issues. I know a lot of things you can fix. Um, there's a whole wiki guide showing you different things you can do to fix this and tweak it. So there's a lot more stuff I'm going to be going through probably in the future, but we'll see how that goes. But so far, um, it, it's working pretty well. So um, I would say that the keyboard works nicely and the haptic feedback feels pretty nice. Also, this text editor works uh, pretty nicely. You can, you know, type in text, and that actually feels pretty nice. Um, yeah, I, I actually like that. I, I don't feel like I'm missing out on any functionality. It seems to work pretty smoothly. Um, yeah, so overall, that see, see, look at that. That that's not bad. Um, what what else? Let's see. You can close this app like that. You just swipe up like this, and yeah, sometimes it works a little strange. Oh, okay, so it's coming up with this thing saying, hey, do you want to save this document? You know what? Let's, let's try saving it. Okay, so um, actually, let's open that back up. Open the text editor back up. I have not tested reopening documents on this yet. So, okay, opens the last document that I was using, and it's saved in my document structure. Okay, so that, that, that works. Um, it's telling me no recent documents. Sorry, that's a little bit. Yeah, that, that's not supposed to behave like that. You can open another tab, uh, save another thing, uh, or you know, edit another file, um, save it, and all right, comes it gives me a default recommended name. Save it wherever I want. Okay, let's see if we can do that. And let's see, let's kill this application and relaunch it. Text editor. I know this is. Probably not the most exciting application. We'll, we'll switch to some others. We have a lot of other stuff working pretty well on here. All right, everything is, all right, what, what, whatever. I'm sure those will come up just fine. All right, anyways, let, let Firefox is working on this. Um, so Wi-Fi is working pretty well. I actually, um, you, you can see it here. Like if you pull down from the top, you can see your status is similar to what you would get on Linux or an iPhone. I mean, I mean, it's, arranged differently, but it's the same idea, right? Now, um, let, let, let's see here. So we went into settings, right? And the, these are, these all make, the, this makes pretty good sense. It's arranged in, uh, yeah, some, okay, there we go. It's a, it's a little slow. The interface is a little slow and sometimes you don't know if it like died or isn't responding. It's, it's not perfect, but it's, it's working a whole lot more smoothly than it was previously. So, Go to Wi-Fi. See, I'm connected to my Wi-Fi network. Um, basically, you just click on it and put in your password. It's as easy as um, Android or or iOS. So that that was actually pretty nice. Um, so for Firefox, I'm able to you know I'm able to open an instance and browse websites like Wikipedia. It has DuckDuckGo as the default um, as the default search and um, Right here, we can we, have, we can play videos on YouTube like this. So that's working pretty well. And come on, let me pause this. 
Okay, there, there we go. I, I don't know what this is at the bottom here. I don't know why that's being displayed. I don't, I don't know why I have all these tabs here either. All right, this, this is a little bit. Okay, there, there we go. I think that's because it was. I see so you, you can actually switch between um, hor horizontal and vertical, or, or landscape and portrait modes, right? And I think it was just displaying in a strange. Yeah, this is a, looks a little bit weird. Um, all right. In, anyways, it, it's functional. Anyways, you can play videos. You can. Uh, all right. The touch screen isn't as responsive as I, I'm used to. Um, I, I don't know why I can't drag that. Yes, yeah, so I don't know why I can't drag that, but um, you can play videos and watch them. The audio works. Um, yeah, I wouldn't trust it to be super responsive all the time. So uh, you, you can see, like, I fumbled around with it a little bit there. It's a whole lot more. You know, I've been using Linux and, or rather, I've been using. Uh, well, yeah, I've been using Linux forever, and been using Android and and iOS phones for for many many years now. They're pretty intuitive and quick. You can pause stuff or do whatever you want quickly. So this this just feels a little bit more clunky, but uh, I mean, it's still working. Um, play different. Th these are just like the default videos well, that came up. Yeah, I can't drag that. So yeah, you, you you can play videos. You can select different videos. Um, yeah, yeah, it seems to be working completely fine. You can. Uh, yeah, something was going on before with the display up here. It was just uh, displaying a little bit weird. But any case, you you yeah. So it's it's a little bit. It's, it doesn't work perfectly, but. Uh, you, you can go like this, maximize your video. You can go like this. Um, yeah, landscape works fine. Switch back, and uh, there you go. So um, you can actually supposedly turn that on and off with this, just like with uh, basically just like with uh, Android or iOS. Yeah, so it's not. Change it like that, and it will not go into landscape mode automatically. So there you go. Now, um, all right, en enough with this. Let's see, what else have we tested? So we, we've tested that uh, the keyboard works well. Haptic feedback is nice. Um, you know, Wi-Fi is working. Firefox works. YouTube plays videos. The internal speakers work great. Um, and the headphone jack actually works great. I was able to plug my headphones in. Those work great on here. Um, what, what else? The, uh, yeah, so, so the, uh, the audio with the built in speakers, um, has kind of like a, it, it doesn't sound as smooth or nice as most phones I'm used to these days. Um, which is fine. This isn't exactly a, a flagship phone. It's not going to compete against like a, you know, a, you know, a, a phone from Android or Samsung that's over a thousand dollars when this was only, you know, a whole lot less than that. Um, but uh, yeah, generally this works pretty well. Um, the other thing I tried out was the terminal. So I was able to, I was able to use a VI. Um, it's not too bad. I mean, it's, you're, you're not going to expect an on-screen keyboard like this to be able to, and, and you could connect, uh, I have not tested a physical keyboard, but this is not going to compare to a physical keyboard, but it's still usable. Now, um, the keyboard is actually pretty nice, haptic feedback and all, I mean, I like haptic feedback, some people probably don't like it, um, but yeah, you can view your documents there, there's that text file we created before, and notice there's a test.py, so that I created that before. Now, I'm going to show you, um, you can actually use a VI on this. Um, and, uh, if you want to tab that out, well, you know, I'm going to say T E and let's say you want to tab that out. You can hit this over here and hit tab and enter. And there we go. We're in here. Now you notice you have a control and an alt at the top of the screen and the arrows. So that's all fine and great and everything. But, um, but there's no escape button. They should really should have put an escape button there because you're not going to be using VI without an escape button. But you can press this. This will give you, you can press this thing over here and get your escape button and all your other things like your function keys and stuff like that. 
Oh, which and your tab button, which I'm using a lot, so it's it's worth using. But yeah, from here you can just hit escape. Um, if you were in edit mode, we didn't even. Well, let, let's go into edit mode. All right, so edit mode. Um, now you want to get out of edit mode. You can say escape, and then uh, let's say say if you want to do something like copy a line, yank yank, put. There we go. Copy a line in VI. Now, say if we want to get out of here, just type a colon w quit and wq to quit and there we go we edited our python file now we, we can run this python te and tab this out there we go python test.py so it's basically a hello world python program hit enter and there we go it this much works so uh yeah basically just prints test twice so yeah, we can run Python. I didn't even have to install Python. It comes with Python installed already, which is pretty nice. Um, let's see, what, what, what else? Um, side note about Alpine Linux, and I guess probably true for PostMarket OS as well. They have their own package manager. Um, it has like muscle libc, which I'm not too familiar with, um, but I, I believe that's a, a more efficient um, better alternative to glibc as far as i understand anyways it also comes with i think busybox instead of um, a lot of gnu utility or gnu utilities um but i i'm only just learning about um alpine linux today i've heard of it before i've never really looked into it so i'm kind of new to alpine linux and uh also new to postmarket os so uh yeah so far so good i'm kind of liking it alpine linux is uh known for being like a, a a really um, lean, trimmed down um, Linux distro that's security focused and all that, and it's uh, it, it's nice and um, uh, basically just focused on all that stuff, right? So, um, and th this Alpine Linux is, or, or rather, Post Market OS is what people um, tend to be uh, um, tend to be recommending these days. Uh, out of all the different, I mean, there's a whole huge list of uh, operating systems you can install on this phone. But people seem to be uh, recommending uh, Post Market OS with Posh. Now you, you can run, you can install Post Market OS with a lot of different desktops, but the recommended desktop is going to be Posh these days, or, or um, it's Posh is like a, it's a phone um, shell. It, it, they, they take the it's it's fa Posh or Fosh Fosh I think it's P H. Um, yeah, so something like that. In any case, um, yeah, P H O S H. So P H O from phone and S H for shell. So Fosh, and uh, yeah, so that that's basically the uh, the the graphical environment that we're here using here. Fosh on top of Post Market OS, and that's that's the combo that I, I've been seeing after some quick search, some brief searching around. That's what people have been recommending for this phone now as of as of uh, right now or as of pretty recently so um, I figured I'd give this a try I might want to try some other OS's I installed the OS to the SD card on here so it's not what's running um, it's not flashed to internal memory but um, yeah I might try some other OS's I might tinker around with this one and see what else I can get working see what I can tweak on here um, I have not decided yet um, as far as the camera the camera is pretty low quality um, let, let me let me just okay. So megapixels is the camera app, and image viewer is the image viewer app. I have not gotten this to work yet. So let, let, let me see if we can demonstrate this really quick. All right. So okay, I think this is just being slow right now. I think you see you have like things. I think that's for the shutter, the flash, the ISO. You can adjust all these things, but uh, yeah, this is. Okay, so this is not working. Uh, maybe if I kill it, maybe if I, I, I want to kill all of these applications. I have not tried killing everything yet. Okay, so when you kill everything, you, you just end up here at this screen with, with all of these apps here. So this is like your home screen, I guess. So I was expecting something with less stuff and with wallpaper. Um, I'll have to play around with that a little bit more. Um, let's try launching megapixels again. I mean, I, we, I think we did we did do a fresh load of this app. But let's see if this works. Okay, so all right, we can see the camera is kind of working now. But you see, you see how uh, low quality that is. Like, I mean, it definitely doesn't have good HDR. 
like the, the lighting will throw it off a lot but um but yeah you see you see how grainy that is i mean even though like i'm recording this video with my iphone and i'm, I'm recording my uh but yeah that that's pretty grainy right there right um so it, it looks like an old webcam from you know the the 90s or the early 2000s but yeah it, it's i mean it's oh it's passable. This is actually more, if you zoomed out on something with a lot of light, I think, I think it's just not even focusing right now. All right, there you go. See, you can focus it a little, little bit. And I have, I just pushed all my stuff back here to make a space for my, to uh, record this video. So there's a whole mess of stuff there, but you can see if it's, if the light is right and you get, can get it to focus, it's, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm not even, yeah, I'm not even showing what's on the screen here. Yeah. If you, if you can get it to focus right and the light is right you can get it to be kind of clear but it's yes yeah, you see, see that it goes in and out of focus see it's not too bad when it's focused but it's still pretty grainy and not you know it's it's pretty low quality and pretty low image quality right so try to take a picture like this looks like it successfully took a picture but it's it's trying to do something there it might just be that it's ridiculously slow um I don't know if it's ever going to do. Maybe it just takes a really long time. I, I can't believe that it would actually be broken. But I, I have yet to get a, an image to show up in here. And I believe you can select a directory that you could load images from. Yeah, I haven't gotten that to work yet. This is just sat here like this loading. There's probably a fix for this that I'll, I'll have to go through. I'll have to look for fixes, but as of now, I would I would count this as not working. Um, yeah, so this, I mean, maybe if I leave that there long enough, it'll start working, um, but I would count that as not working. Now, I'm not going to put a SIM card in here, so I'm not te I'm not going to test texting or phone. Um, some of the cal calculators, pretty standard, um, nothing exciting here. Uh, what, what else do we have? Yeah, so calculator. Um, no, yeah, nothing super exciting. Um, we got clock, so you, you can set up the uh, world clock for different time zones. You can also, uh, pretty standard stuff, add alarm, stopwatch timer, basically the same stuff with your iPhone or Android phone. Uh, what, what else on here? Um, some other apps that aren't super exciting um you have a software center where you can load new software right, no application data found installed updates yeah up to date all right so this is going to require some tweaking or tinkering we're, we're going to have to get this fixed uh, but yeah that's that's about i think that's everything i wanted to cover with this so let's see, is there anything I'm, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. This is the, uh, yeah, this is the pine phone these days. So it's, it's not bad, um, working better than before, but, um, yeah, this is not really ready for production use or it's, it's as far from being like an Android or an iPhone replacement, even if everything were working, it's just not at the same level. Well, it's, it's a nice thing to tinker around with and to play with. So, I, I mean, I would view this as a toy or a development tool, and that, that's it. Just just something to, uh, to, to, to basically something to tinker with. And they, they, they make sure you know that when you buy this, this isn't, you know, being marketed as a, a real right, ready-to-go Android or iOS replacement. So that that's my March um, 2023 update. Um, probably going to do some more updates coming up pretty soon for early 2023, probably this month. But we will see. Um, we got a lot of other things I'm focusing on. Um, you might want to hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell icon, so YouTube actually lets you know when we come out with new videos. You know, give me a thumbs up, and uh, also leave a comment down below if you know something I don't know. Um, not just for me, but for other people to read that comment. And um, yeah, might want might want to give me a thumbs up. And uh, that's pretty much it for today. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on that next video.